Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. We're going to talk about stage one tuning. Now, when we talk about stages of tune, stage one are simple bolt-on mods. Most of them you can do yourself. They don't require extra work or other mods to support them. So we're going to look at eight of the best mods that you can do for your car. Um, we're going to grade them in order of effectiveness and how much benefit you'll actually get from them. And we discuss the pros and cons of each of these mods so you can get your car project off to a really good start. So with spring upon us, a lot of people are looking to get their car set up and ready for the summer. So this is the time when car parts stores start getting busy. People start writing themselves a shopping list of bits to go out and buy, and they start researching all of the different mods. So let's look at the best mods for your car and which ones are gonna be most effective. Look out especially for number eight, particularly if you've got a turbocharged car, because this mod makes a massive massive difference to the power that you'll get from your car. First mod that most people do to their car actually doesn't make much difference to the power. They change the air intake, the air filter. So on a stock engine where you haven't done anything else, changing the filter will not actually do very much to the power levels of your car because you're not hitting a restriction in your intake. Most manufacturers, I say most because there are a few exceptions, but most manufacturers have made an intake that can flow more than enough air for the stock engine. So just removing the restriction when there isn't one, you're not going to see a power gain. And this has been borne out time and time again when we get the car on the dyno and we look at the power figures before and after improving the induction in some way with an induction kit or a sports air filter or something like that. And you just don't see an appreciation appreciable difference in the car's power. But they are still good mods because by removing that restriction, you're setting the car up to make more power. And when you start adding other mods to your car, they won't be choked by a restrictive air intake. So you, you're actually getting ahead of the problems that you might face. I will say though, we get a few messages from people that have problems with better flowing induction kits on their engines. They start to get flat spots. Often it's just down to a, a fueling issue. So getting the injectors clean, running some injector cleaner through is often enough to bring it up to spec. In some cases the airflow meter is just not used to reading the amount of air and the car's ECU is starting to get a bit confused because it's got used to certain parameters going into it and now suddenly things have changed. It's starting to throw a hissy fit and you're getting flat spots. So in some of those cases just running the car for a couple of hundred miles is usually enough to sort out the ECU and just raise the levels it's been trimming to to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So next up are exhaust mods. Now we're talking about stage one, things you can easily do yourself. So it depends a little bit on how competent you are with um, DIY and working on your car. So for most drivers, just changing the silencer, the back box uh, is within the grasp of pretty much everyone. And that again, like the induction kit, it won't make much difference to the power of the car. You might get a little bit of a better exhaust note. Um, and again, it's just a mod that's freeing up the restrictions that you get. So a lot of manufacturers design that rear silencer to effectively deaden all of the noise coming from the engine. And often that impedes the airflow through the exhaust. So by getting a, a better designed sports exhaust silencer, you can actually maximize that airflow. And again, you're setting the car up without a restriction. So when you start adding other mods to your car, you get the benefit of those mods. So moving up the exhaust, you've got the catalysts and you've got the headers. Um, now changing those will usually make a little bit of a difference on most cars. But I personally feel we're starting to get out of the realms of stage one your typical easy DIY mod and we require a little bit more specialist skill and specialist knowledge when we start playing around with catalysts and with the headers but by all means if you've got the abilities to do that get those headers and the catalyst swapped out for a better flowing sports alternative but don't rip out the cats because in most areas it's illegal to do so and a better flowing sports cat is just as good as removing the cat in most cases that we've seen there's no gain 
going to actually removing the cat when you compare that against the benefits you get from a sports cat. So another common mod that people do that is stage one, it's very easy to do, is just to change out the alloy wheels on your car. So most people think about going bigger, but if you're purely into performance of a car, you need to go lighter. And in many cases, that involves sticking to the same size and choosing a design of wheel that is lighter. You're reducing the unsprung weight that the car is carrying. And that dramatically can improve the handling. And depending on the design of the actual alloy, it can improve the cooling of your brake discs. So if you do go larger, the aim is to keep the overall diameter and rotation of the wheel the same. If you start changing that too much, you start messing up the final drive ratio. You can affect the gearing of the car effectively and your speedo will either underread or overread depending on which way you've gone um, with the diameter of the new wheels. So you can do that by getting a slightly larger alloy but a lower profile tire. It keeps the overall diameter exactly the same. Alloy wheels look great on cars, so as a visual mod, it's probably one of the most popular upgrades that people do after the really easy induction kits and air filters that we see. Choose carefully, make sure that you get a wheel that is lighter to get the benefit of it. So next up, we come to improving the handling. Now, even if you've got a low powered small car, you can really enhance your enjoyment of the car and make it drive so much better just by improving the handling. Now, we're not talking about super low and super hard springs because both of those will cause problems on our roads. We've got potholes and lumps and bumps. And when you take the car out on the track, you can pretty much guarantee the surface is well maintained and you can get away with lowering everything as much as possible and getting things as hard as possible. But on the road, there's a trade-off. You want to eliminate body roll as much as possible because that's affecting your car's handling adversely. So just by getting a set of coilovers, you can adjust the ride height slightly. If you've changed the alloys, you might have a problem with them rubbing on the wheel arches. So just changing the ride height a little bit can actually negate that problem. And if the springs are slightly firmer, it can stop the tires from rubbing on the arches. And generally getting that suspension set up correctly will dramatically improve the handling. It's not just a matter of going lower and firming up the spring. The actual geometry of the settings makes a difference. We've got videos on that where we look at the camber and the toe angles of the suspension just to help you get a grasp as to what's gonna work. And if you go in one direction on one setting, what that's going to actually do to your car's handling. So please be sure to check out our videos on that. We, we go into a little bit more depth and we've got some more technical videos coming up so if you haven't subscribed already please do so and you'll be able to keep advancing your knowledge as your confidence grows in working on your car. So another mod that's often overlooked but it's still an important stage one mod is uprating the brakes. So we're just really going to talk about pads in this video. We're just talking about easy stage one tuning mods that you can do yourself. So swapping out the pads, it makes a big difference to the braking of the car. Just getting a, a better friction material and replacing an old worn pad with a new one in most cases dramatically improves your braking. Avoid the race spec brakes. You, you certainly don't want to put a stage three racing pad on a road car because it's not going to work effectively at the slower road temperatures. They need a lot of heat in order to bite. They're designed to work in the upper part of the temperature ranges. So they need to be hot before they start to bite effectively. So don't cut corners either. We find a lot of cheap long life pads a long life because they're not very good at stopping the car. You don't get very much friction from them. Check out our site and articles because different pads work effectively on different cars. So we try and make recommendations wherever we've got statistics and data to back up those recommendations. So for Audis and Volkswagen, something I've got quite a lot of experience with I use um, Paget pads black diamond work quite well and I've had good effect from the green stuffs the EBCs um, I try and avoid all of the race spec pads though for a road car but if I take a car out on the track day it's different you, you want a completely different set of mods the eighth mod that we recommend doing as a stage one mod is just a remap. Getting the ECU in your car remapped changes so many parameters. And if your car has got a turbocharger, it can make dramatic differences to your power. We've seen gains between 20 and 40% 
just through doing a remap. And it's a very simple job. They'll come along, they'll plug your car into a computer, they download your map, they'll make a few tweaks and adjustments. Hopefully they'll be setting up on a rolling road so they can see what they're doing in real time. And then everything is downloaded back into your car's ECU. So you get faster responses, you get your boost coming on at a lower point. Um, the RPM range may well have been extended as well, depending on the map that you go for. But just doing that remap makes a massive difference to the power of your car and it doesn't usually require any other mods. You'll get a little bit more out of any mod if you're prepared to do more mods to support them. Um, but in terms of just a simple stage one mod, you really can't beat a remap. If you've not got a turbo, it will still on most engines make a difference, but you're only looking at about 10% of a power gain in most cases. So there's probably other mods that will give you more of a power gain if you've got a naturally aspirated engine. But with so many cars today, they're fitted with turbos from the factory. Manufacturers want to make a car that's powerful, efficient, and economical and the turbocharger is a great way of doing that because they can use a relatively small engine and give you quite a large power to work from. So hopefully this has given you an overview in stage one tuning. We've got another video coming up very shortly on stage two mods. So we start then to look at multiple mods, applying them together and the more complex mods involving the brakes, the brake discs and other aspects of the car to help you get the most out of it. So please subscribe. Don't forget, stay tuned and we'll keep you up to date with all the latest cutting edge news from the car tuning world. Thanks for watching. Bye.